Hello and welcome to this special program marking the 20th anniversary of the ratification of the National Action Charter of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Throughout the previous years, Bahrain has accomplished various distinguished achievements with constant remarkable gains. It has adopted democracy, which became an essential part of the policies of its successive rulers for decades. The establishment of the Shura Council in the 1930s of the last century was the first democratic experience in Bahrain under the reign of late Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, which was considered an important stage of the history of Bahrain. When His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ascended the throne in 1999, the kingdom has entered a new era of reforms with comprehensive and sustainable development in many fields. The reform project of His Majesty the King, which was launched in 2001, reshaped the kingdom's strategy in developing state institutions and national legislation. In today's special coverage, we will shed light on national achievements in various sectors right after this. منقطعة النظير لقد تمكنا جميعا على مدى أكثر من عقد من تحقيق العديد من الإنجازات والكثير قادم بعون الله مع قناعتنا في استمرار الإصلاح الشامل الذي بدأناه معا وسنكمله معا بعون من الله نحو بناء مستقبل أفضل لبلدنا ولجميع المواطنين حفظ الله البحرين وأدام عليها نعمة الأمن والاستقرار والرخاء وعلى الله الاتكال وكل عام وأنتم بخير National Action Charter, which was approved by 98.4% of the people of Bahrain, is a great step towards modernization and development that covered human, political, religious and social aspects. After the ratification, the National Assembly was formed, consisting of two chambers, the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives, which perform their roles with constant coordination and effective collaboration. With its 40 appointed members, the Shura Council has played a pivotal role over the previous years in terms of maintaining the successful national democratic environment and advanced political action in the kingdom. And to know more about the Shura Council's role as well as its local and international contribution, we would like to welcome the Shura Council member, Mr. Ahmed Al Haddad. Mr. Ahmed, thank you very much for joining us here. Thank today. you for hosting me today. At the outset, I would like to uh, uh, present my uh, warm greetings to his majesty the king and his highness the crown prince and the prime ministers and the people of bahrain on the 20th anniversary of the approval of the charter by bahraini people thank you very much yes. would you like to add to that or should uh, i yes, dig in deeper uh, well uh, uh, let me say one thing here I think uh, His Majesty the King, when he came to power, March mm -hmm. 1999, he had a clear vision for the future political situation in Bahrain. And since we have started with the Action Charter, mm -hmm. w which was approved, as the report had said, by 98.4% uh, uh, by the people of Bahrain, yes. And it was a great success for uh, Bahrainis as a whole. And uh, I want to point one thing here. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot of people do not know about the background of the approval of this charter. Mm -hmm. The drafting committee, when they finished from their works, they proposed to His Majesty the King that this charter shall be uh, agreed upon by the eminent personalities of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. And then we can go ahead. His Majesty declined this idea, and he insisted that it should be put to the people 
uh, with, uh, regarding the approval, and there was referendums, and it was passed, as you said, by the percentage mm -hmm. you have mentioned in your report. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this kind of uh, step gave the charter credibility, mm -hmm. morally, mm -hmm. politically as well, and enhance the will of the people by this gesture. And this here, I would like to really thank His Majesty the King for this step. It was a challenge mm -hmm. for everybody, and he accepted the challenge, and the people of Bahrain supported him overwhelmingly. Yes. And this is a great achievement for Bahrain as a whole. Indeed, indeed. Mr. Ahmed, it is known that the Kingdom of Bahrain has a very rich democratic experience, of course, that was witnessed constant progress throughout the years. Now, can you tell us about the stages of development witnessed by the legislative work and how it paved the way towards today's political prosperity? You know, uh, the base for all this, the foundation for all this is the National Action Charter of uh, 2001, February 14, 15, yes. which was approved by the people. Mm -hmm. It has uh, contained all the elements for the, de uh, the democratic developments in Bahrain. And from there, we have started the political process in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bahrain policy, based on three factors, Mm -hmm. As mentioned by uh, His Excellency the Foreign Ministers, we had a meeting a week ago with him, and this has been approved by His Majesty the King. On three factors, mm -hmm. one is peace, second, human right, and third, sustainable development. And if we read the whole content of the Charter, it involves, it embodies all these factors. Yeah. And also, you know, the very important things the king has started with when the charter was approved by the people is the creation of the lower house of the parliament. Mm -hmm. 2002, there was an election mm -hmm. for the lower house and was uh, inaugurated. And from here, we have started the process of yeah. democracy in the country. Of course, uh, the parliament composed of two houses. The upper one, the Shura Council, and the lower one is the Council's House of Representatives. And this also opened the door to a lot of developments, being economic, mm -hmm. political, social, educational, mm -hmm. etc. And from here, we have put the first a step towards continuing a process. Mm -hmm. You know, the developments, uh, democratic development in Bahrain, it's a continuous, it's not statistic. We will, it will be with us, and all of us are working for the best for the citizen of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. uh, the second point is this, you know, beside the creation of uh, the parliament, uh, the House of Representatives, also there are a lot of uh, you know procedures and steps being taken for instance uh, the separation of the three powers mm -hmm. the legislative uh, execut executive and the judicial so each of them as per bahrain constitution work in certain fields but at the end they all work for the interests of the country as a whole mm -hmm. we have also uh, the Supreme Council of Women, which was created yes. because of the Charter. Mm -hmm. And this council really it played and still playing a very important role in enhancing the welfare of Bahraini women in all fields. Mm -hmm. And I would like to seize this occasion to thank Her uh, Royal Highness Sheikh Sabicha for all the efforts she is doing to uplift the conditions of Bahraini women. We really appreciate what they do. Uh, we have been invited so many times to the council mm -hmm. and we participated in a lot of discussion. And they're open, they listen to us, yeah. they try to improve the 
welfare and the condition of the women. They try to support them. And this is really uh, a, pack, a, pack, a, pack, a particular uh, event and feature of Bahraini's women in this regard. Indeed. Besides also, we have a lot of human rights institution which was created. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Bahrain Institute for Human Rights, which has played very important role in awareness of Bahrain people and also international uh, opinion of the situation, situation of human rights in the country. And this has been a plus point for Bahrain. Yes. Also, we have uh, the NGOs which plays a very important role mm -hmm. in educating the people in democratic developments in the country. These are very important elements. We have also the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, which plays a very important role in educating the Bahraini opin uh, public opinions uh, regarding the democratic developments in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if we come to the House of Representatives, they also play a very important role in having uh, legislatures, laws, draft laws that enhance the welfare of the people, the right of the people of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Shura Council is part and parcel of the system. Yes. We both, at both houses, work together, coordinate our uh, policies, work with the governments, work with the ministries, work with the NGOs, so as to come to a kind of uh, uh, democratic developments in the country which is sustainable, which can protect the welfare of the uh, citizens of Bahrain. Indeed. Now, uh, as you mentioned, they all complete each other, uh, of course. And uh, the National Action Charter, uh, tell us how did it consolidate Bahrain's legislative work? You know, uh, from there, as I said, we have uh, started with the House of Representatives yes. and also the House, uh, the Shura Council. So there are a lot of laws which was enacted by both houses mm -hmm. that contributed to the legislatures that uh, benefits the people of Bahrain. Let me cite one important law. Uh, the Family Unified Laws, mm -hmm. it was passed 2009 mm -hmm. for the Sunni section, mm -hmm. but the Sia Jafri section was not passed because of certain circumstances at that time. Mm -hmm. So a lot, uh, a big portion of the society, the women were left out. Mm -hmm. uh, 2017, it was an initiative by the Legislative and Law Committee of the Shura Council mm -hmm. started the uh, draft proposal for this law, mm -hmm. which contains as well the, the Jaffari section of the law. Okay. Uh, it was a challenge for everybody. Yeah. The king played a very important role by appointing a committee of experts so as to find a common stand that everybody will agree to. By July 2017, mm -hmm. it was passed, mm -hmm. after it was at by the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. passed by the Shura Council. And the king was very happy, and they celebrated this uh, event yeah. uh, with all happiness and uh, a gratitude to everybody. And this is really uh, help to enhance the other sections of the society, the women's. Yeah. And we had now a complete, clear law that serve the women of Bahrain and the families of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. So uh, we actually, both houses, uh, coordinate, as I said, our uh, position vis-a-vis -vis a lot of draft laws, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, policies, so as to come with laws that will help and enhance the social, political, economic, educative objectives of the people of Bahrain.
This is internally. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, both of the houses, mm -hmm. play a very important role in international arena. When we are invited to participate in conferences or par parliamentarian meetings, yeah. we always coordinate our position as one team. Mm -hmm. We don't say that we are from Shura or from the House of yeah. We work together. We, if we have certain concern vis-a-vis -vis the laws that will help Bahrain, we always coordinate our position as a team, work with the other countries also to uh, present our issues, Bahrain issue in these fields. And we have a lot of respect from the other side, from the international teams who come and, and uh, participate in these meetings. So uh, constantly we are working together, yeah. both the houses. Mm -hmm. And if there is an issue, mm -hmm. we always come out and issue certain statement mm -hmm. in coordinating with each other. Mm -hmm. And this is really helping the development of the democratic, democratic process in the country. Yeah. And we really, uh, at the Shura concept, we are very happy and thankful to our brothers at the House of Problems for their cooperation. And always they extend their help and assistance and vice versa. Indeed. Um, Mr. Ahmed, we know that the Shura Council's uh, committees are the pillars of, uh, of the legislative work. Now, can you give us an overview or a brief idea about these committees and how their performance is integrated to serve the unified goals of the Council? You know, we have eight committees mm -hmm. at, the council, at the Shura Councils, and they're very important committees. And all these committees, when they have draft laws mm -hmm. either from the government or from certain individuals or amendments or certain members of the Shura Councils mm -hmm. as per the constitution 15 members of the Shura Council can propose uh, amendments and also have draft uh, laws one or five or six up to that numbers so we always as members of the committees, mm -hmm. coordinate our position within the Shura Council. Okay. Most of the laws or draft laws or proposal comes first to the Legislative and Law Commission mm -hmm. to study this law and to see whether it, is a, it's, it's, it goes with the uh, articles of the Bahrain Constitution or not. Mm -hmm. So if we approve it, then it goes to other committees, like uh, service committees, mm -hmm. which plays a very important role. Mm -hmm. And then we have amenities uh, committee also. We have a foreign affairs committee, and uh, we have human rights committee, mm -hmm. we have youth committee, and we have uh, women and child committee. Mm -hmm. So all together, we always, and there is one thing also, Sarah, I want to tell you. Yeah. It's very interesting. If I am a member, I'm a member of legislative committee, mm -hmm. but there are certain issues that concern me. Mm -hmm. I can go to the Service Committee or Foreign Affairs Committee or any committee of the House mm -hmm. to express my voice and my position vis-a-vis okay. -vis certain draft laws. Mm -hmm. And this is really you know, giving us at the Shura Council a kind of movement that we can explain our positions, yeah. our opinions. So when it comes to the main session, when the Shura Council holds its main session mm -hmm. and these laws come, then we have a clear picture, yeah. a clear position. And this is something, you know, we are very happy, very proud of. That's good. We are very proud of the Shura Council as Thank well. you. Um, now, in performing its role, uh, the Shura Council, of course, collaborates with several authorities and institutions. Yes. Um, how do you value such cooperation and how does it contribute uh, positively to achieve uh, the aspired goals? You know, this is a very important question you raised. And I think, and I would like to thank a lot of ministers of the government who usually take their time mm -hmm. to attend the committee's uh, meetings uh, to express the, the government position vis-a-vis -vis certain laws and issues. Mm -hmm. They come, they take all the trouble, they come and they give their opinions, mm -hmm. they enter, uh, enter uh, sh kind of dialogue 
with the members of the committee, express their uh, differences, their agreements, and this shows that those ministers are very serious about contributing to the development of the democratic process in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. It's on not only the ministers, also the officials, senior, junior officials, they are there at the committees. Uh, there are certain questions which were posed by the members of the committees mm -hmm. and they answer them they, in, in a very a clear uh, way and that helped the process of uh, democratic development in the country. Yeah. Uh, also, it doesn't end here. This is the committees. Okay. Then we go to the main session of the Shura Council. Mm -hmm. A lot of ministers, they come personally Unfortunately, now with the COVID. Corona yes. 19, we have virtual meeting, but still they participate, they give their opinions, they answer the questions of the member, the Shura councils, mm -hmm. and we are very glad to have this kind of cooperation mm -hmm. because at the end, we all work for the interest of the country, for the interest of the people of Bahrain, yes. and also to protect the right and the interests of the residents who contribute to the well-being, the economic development of Bahrain mm -hmm. for years and years. Yes. Now, you've mentioned COVID-19, of course. Uh, it is inevitable uh, to, to dig uh, deeper into that. Yeah. Now, Bahrain society and its various uh, institutions, of course, uh, have uh, been affected with COVID-19 and a lot of procedures and uh, safety measures have been taken. Now, um, the safety, of course, of people and sustainable uh, growth of sectors is uh, definitely very important. Can you tell us about the Shura Council's uh, contribution and role in this regard? Well, uh, you know, the safety of, of everybody is important uh, for the Shura Council's uh, uh, chairman mm -hmm. and also the secretaries. From the very start, Sarah, uh, we had test for the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Up to now, we had five times test. Mm -hmm. The last one is last week. The, 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 the concern authorities at the council mm -hmm. are very aware mm -hmm. of the safety of the members and the staff of the security. Sec mm -hmm. And this is their obligation and duty, as they said, to protect everybody. Uh, that is why we have, uh, we were the legislative and law committee mm -hmm. at the Shura Council. Mm -hmm. I am a member of that committee. Yeah. We were the first in the country mm -hmm. to start virtual meeting because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. 18 of March 2020. Mm -hmm. Then on 12 April, the Shura Council started the process of virtual meetings because of this virus. Yes. So as uh, to be safe that everybody is okay, not to have you know kind of uh, panic mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going to happen once you have closed meeting or open meetings, and we were very successful, mm -hmm. and uh, this is very important for everybody. Uh, during 2020, the Shura Council had. 17 virtual session. Mm -hmm. Now we are 2021. Every month we have four sessions, mm -hmm. and if you include all these sessions, it will be over uh, 30 or 28 session. So we are very aware, and also we, c we with during the virtual meeting, mm -hmm. we have not felt that anything has changed. Yes. Everybody is given opportunity, everybody is uh, participating, and also this is a, there is one good thing. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking your car yes. and go, you reduce the environment uh, pollution, uh, you don't have uh, traffic problems, mm -hmm. and this also contributes, and it's continuing. So mm -hmm. really we are... Uh, so it is actually more efficient. <laughs> absolutely, and they keep calling us, this, uh, the staff of, this, of the Shura Council, mm -hmm. have you gone for the t test? 
you know, they, they let you uh, feel that they care about you. They yes. care about your health. Yes. They care about everybody, Which actually, is very in important. Bahrain. And it's very important. And we, and I would like to seize this opportunity to thank uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Ali Saleh, the Chairman of the because he, he is the dynamo behind this all. And of course, the staff uh, that support him. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much for that. Now, uh, before uh, we end this, I want to uh, uh, go and tackle the emergence of new means of communication such as social media. Of course, it facilitated the fast interaction between the legislative branch and citizens, of course. And how do you value the effectiveness of such approach, especially during the current uh, health circumstances? You know, uh, Sarah, COVID-19 has so many shortcomings, mm -hmm. being economic, mm -hmm. political, social, and business-wide. Mm -hmm. But also, it has hidden benefits. One of those benefits, Sarah, is the virtual meeting. Yes. This allows a lot of institutions in Bahrain to interact, mm -hmm. to discuss things. Uh, you know, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had eight sessions, work workshop sessions, mm -hmm. for preparing the Bahrain National Plan of Human Rights. And that allows more than 400 participants mm. to take place. The foreign minister, we had a meeting with him last week. He mentioned, uh, had we not had this COVID-19, we would have never had this big numbers yeah. and it would have caused a lot of money yes. and arrangement. So this is one hitting, uh, hitting uh, benefit of, uh, also a lot of uh, institution benefit financially. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, Netflix, for instance. You see how billions of dollars they gain. Uh, you have the uh, iPad, computers, companies. Mm -hmm. it's, it's booming. You know, they're good. And also, as I said, env environment environmental-wise, mm -hmm. it also helps to reduce the... Like, t take for instance, India. Yeah. India, Delhi is the worst, Inclusion. second worst country, uh, city yeah. pollution in the world. Yes. When COVID... 19 came March, they closed the whole city. Mm -hmm. You know, 80% of the pollution came down. Yeah. And it benefits everybody. Exactly. So there are good things and bad things. And uh, we look forward, inshallah, to, to, to finish with this disease, with this virus. And we look forward that life will be coming normal once again, inshallah. 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 Um, so I've had before. Um, we end uh, this very interesting conversation. Is there anything else that you would like to add to our view? Well, I would like to say that uh, his, uh, ha uh, his Majesty the King has taken courageous step for the welfare of the people of Bahrain. Uh, Bahrain today, we are all proud in Bahrain today. Yes. It's not only internally. Yes. Let me tell you one thing also international level mm -hmm. with uh, all the democratic developments and the initiative of his uh, Maj majesty the king mm -hmm. we have bahrain have played very important role on international level let me cite two examples Ten. 2006 bahrain presided over the general assembly united nations general assembly two things important happens that here one is the creation of Human Rights Council, 2006, mm -hmm. and Bahrain was member of that council mm -hmm. from 2006 to 2007 mm -hmm. because it was the initiative. So every member was allowed, the 40, 43 members uh, were allowed to have only one year uh, tenure. Then they have to go out. Then in 2009, 2011, Bahrain was re-elected to the Human Rights United Nations Human Rights Council, which is based in Geneva. Mm -hmm. Again, 2017, 2019, mm -hmm. up to 20, uh, up to 2021 uh, December, Bahrain for the third time was also elected to this chamber. So this this shows that the king initiative 
was appreciated by the international international community mm -hmm. and Bahrain was rewarded for being member three times the second issue here yeah. during uh, Bahrain presidency mm -hmm. 2016 the international convention on disabled persons was passed when Bahrain presiding over this uh, General Assembly meetings. Mm -hmm. And this was a great achievement for humanity because the, those w with special needs, they need our help, our as assistance, our as uh, understanding. And with that, with the United Nations General Assembly passing of that uh, mm -hmm. uh, agreement, convention, help these people who are really in dire needs. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that is truly amazing. Yes, um, yes. Shura Council Member, of course, Ahmed Al Haddad. Uh, this is all we have time for here t today. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, can I say one more? Yes, of course. Okay. I would like to seize this opportunity as well mm -hmm. to thank Bahrain TV, both Arabic and international. The, the, it was called 55 channels, English channel, mm -hmm. for hosting such meetings. Because you contribute knowingly or unknowingly with the development of the political, mm -hmm. the democratic process in the country. Mm -hmm. When you host such kind of a meeting, yes. you educate everybody, yeah. the citizens, the foreign community. And we really need such kind of uh, meeting so as we can show we can ex express to the people how Bahrain is very much developed on, on all ca sectors yes. and we are really proud and as Bahrainis we always work together and we wish uh, goodness and stability and security for everybody on this very occasion Inshallah. and I thank you once again for hosting me. Thank you. Actually, thank you very much for this very informative and interesting conversation, uh, Mr. Ahmed Al Haddad. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Um, now, uh, do stay tuned. We will be back right after this.
خالص التهاني وعميق العرفان لمن ساهمت في البناء والتي لم تغب يوما عن ساحة العمل والعطاء على مر التاريخ جاء الميثاق ليضع يده بيد المرأة البحرينية هاتفا لتمكينها في مسار التنمية الوطنية وحصنت بإرادتها المستقلة سياج وحدتنا فهي من قرأت وتعلمت وشاركت وصنعت مجد وطني رسخ الميثاق الإيمان بكون المرأة جزءا أساسيا من الحياة الديمقراطية وأكد على مشروعية حقوقها التي لها من التقدير ما يجعلها شريكا جديرا في إدارة ميادين العمل والحياة لتبغى وكما عهدناها على الدوام خير من يعلو بشأن وطن Welcome back. We continue this special coverage marking the 20th anniversary of the ratification of the National Action Charter of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Now, the charter is considered the pillar for the national advancement of many sectors in the kingdom, which focused on the human capital and empowerment of youth and women. To speak more about this, we are joined by Shura Council member Dr. Ibtisam Dalal, who is also the Women Political Leaders Global Forum, the WPL ambassador to Bahrain. Hello, Dr. Ibtisam. It's very good Hello. to have you here with Hello. us today. Thank you. Thank you, Hope Sarah. you're doing well. Yeah. Now, Dr. Ibtisam, uh, in one of the royal speeches, His Majesty the King said that Bahraini women today exceed the traditional stages of empowerment to reach the higher status they now enjoy. How do you value sh such precious pride and royal trust in Bahraini women's role and efforts? It's very precious trust, really. Uh, as we are celebrating the National uh, Action Charter, mm -hmm. the 20th anniversary, uh, in fact, this charter uh, was the uh, qualitative leap for Bahraini women status today. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, after the uh, National Charter, there was the uh, the uh, uh, the political uh, uh, political uh, eligibility mm -hmm. for women mm -hmm. to uh, vote and uh, to uh, for voting and election in the parliament and the municipality mm -hmm. uh, and this of course give a lot of push for Bahraini women to exceed the expectation and uh, in fact, the National uh, Action Charter, uh, it was with the, uh, with the uh, acceptance of 98.4%. Uh, it was the qualitative leap mm -hmm. for Bahraini women status today. Yes. And uh, with the, uh, all the uh, achievement uh, done for women because of this charter, and then the establishment of the Supreme Council uh, for Women, uh, which is uh, chaired and directed by Her Highness uh, uh, Princess Sabicha bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and with the uh, establishment of the uh, National Advancement Plan mm -hmm. for women, women started really to uh, go beyond expectation. Yes. Uh, a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. and a lot of achievement. Uh, we cannot forget the sustainable, um, uh, the sustainable development uh, plan for Bahrain and on the fifth, uh, uh, the, the number five uh, on this plan was the equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, Supreme Council for Women uh, instructed the government bodies to mm -hmm. form the equal opportunities to integrate the uh, women need into the framework of equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we have 45 committees of equal opportunities in the public sector. Mm -hmm. And all this work really toward the sustainability and uh, toward uh, the achievement uh, and toward the uh, integration of women needs in the, uh, in the labor market. Yes. Uh, today we have uh, in the legislation we have 19 percent mm -hmm. are women and uh, you go to ed education we have 80 percent mm -hmm. which is very high yes and uh, surprisingly in the health sector we have 93 Mashallah. on the leadership level Mashallah. in the Minister of Health yes. so it is really an achievement and we are really proud of it it is we are all very proud. <laughs> 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 now, Dr. Ibtissam, mm -hmm. the, um, of course, the international outreach activity and effective cooperation with regional and global Shura councils uh, and democratic institutions are fundamental parts of the council's work. What can you tell us uh, about that and about your role as one of the Women Political Leaders Global Forum's 41 uh, ambassadors in the world? Um, the women political leader really is a network mm -hmm. of female political leaders mm -hmm. and uh, this goes around the world uh, in addition to the European Parliament for Women mm -hmm. and uh, currently the number are 9,000 it's a huge number Mashallah. yes and uh, uh, the work there is really uh, the, the exchanging of experiences with other uh, nationals mm -hmm. is really very important mm -hmm. and uh, we concentrate on this uh, but the main thing also I mean uh, for me this is a mission or this is uh, really a national responsibility mm -hmm. I take it as national responsibility yes. uh, uh, but it's very important through this WPL that okay. we showcase mm -hmm. the uh, the plan for women advancement which is unique really in the world mm -hmm. and uh, we are very proud of it uh, so in the uh, in the parliament or in this uh, WPL uh, we believe that the uh, economic independence also for women mm -hmm. is really the key for uh, for the equality yes uh, and uh, of course exchanging the experiences is very important mm -hmm. and uh, I mean the, the experience in Bahrain of women uh, of the Supreme Council for women mm -hmm. is really unique yeah. it is not uh, done in any other country uh, so we are proud of that yeah. yes indeed mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Tissam. Now, uh, regarding the current health circumstances, how do you value the importance of Bahraini women's important contributions to the national campaign to combat the pandemic? Well, Bahraini women uh, all over the decades, you know, they are facing a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Bahraini women, uh, from the beginning, of the pandemic uh, last February, one year ago, uh, joined the team under the, uh, of course, uh, uh, His Royal Highness, uh, the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really uh, the, the presence of women really intense. It is 75% yes. in the forefront line. So uh, they are doing a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, 
uh, because you know the healthcare usually between nurses and uh, uh, and GP doctor or general practitioner yeah. mainly are women. Mm -hmm. So it is really uh, taking a big part, but not only in the Ministry of Health, mm. not only in the private sector where also they have a lot of uh, people sacrificing their lives to be in this position, mm -hmm. uh, but also if you go to the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. uh, they, they played a huge role uh, in the beginning when they have to uh, get into the country around 6,000 uh, Bahraini yes. uh, nationals. Yes. Uh, not only that, uh, but also during the lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the embassies, the females in the embassies, our embassies mm -hmm. around the world, uh, played a really important role in uh, providing very micro services for the Bahraini nationals in these countries, mm -hmm. in the host countries. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Bahraini women always there and uh, in very high percentage and uh, playing really major role in controlling the pandemic. Uh, now you see that uh, team, Bahrain team, mm -hmm. uh, it is like a, a beehive. Yes, really. Policies, yes. yes, policies and instructions and uh, and according to the WHO, they change the, uh, the uh, policies and uh, how they deal with the uh, pandemic, yeah. whether they close, whether they open, whether they, uh, how it's going, uh, whether they stop the operations in, mm -hmm. the, in the main hospitals mm -hmm. or you know, they see patients on uh, now on virtual consultation. Yes. So it is going on like that. Yes. Mm. yes. But women are really playing a huge role in a this because of important role. Yeah, because of the uh, of her uh, intense presence. Yes. Mm. Um, now, Dr. Abtissam, Bahraini women's advanced achievements and vital contributions to the comprehensive progress march in the kingdom have been consolidated on various aspects. Can you tell us about the stages of development witnessed by Bahraini women's role in the legislative work? Oh yes, that was, you know, uh, really uh, a history. Mm -hmm. uh, in the legislative part, if you go to the early 30s mm -hmm. in Bahrain, uh, you see that uh, the historical documents shows that Bahrain women mm -hmm. uh, can vote for the municipal if they own a property registered under their names. Okay. And then in 1951, mm -hmm. uh, the Bahraini women also uh, participated in voting mm -hmm. for the central municipal. Okay. And then you go... This is the 1950? 51. Okay. And then if you go to the beginning of the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, you see that uh, there were eight women uh, from, the, uh, from the Mother and Child Welfare Society mm -hmm. and an Nahda Women Society. Mm -hmm. This participated in the, uh, uh, in the referendum mm -hmm. uh, for uh, having Bahrain as, you know, uh, for the, uh, the identity, the Arab identity mm -hmm. of Bahrain. Uh, and uh, uh, then you go to the 2000. Mm -hmm. And the 2000 when His Majesty uh, appointed four women as legislators in the Shura Council. And then that was followed by the uh, by the uh, by establishment of the committee for the national mm -hmm. uh, for the national action charter yes. and there were two women mm -hmm. out of 16 members in the preparation for the draft of the uh, national action charter uh, and then it goes of course you know the appointment of women yes. in the legislative uh, institutions uh, and then in uh, 2018, we have the Speaker of Parliament, mm -hmm. which is the you know second uh, second woman yes. 
uh, in the Arab world. Yes. First one was uh, in United Arab Emirates, and we have the uh, second one. But I think um, uh, the situation of uh, Her Excellency Fawzi Zainal is a little bit different than the one in Emirates. So you see that how it is developed, and we are looking really for more participation of women mm -hmm. in the legislative institutions. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, now, Dr. Tissam, the National Action Charter is considered one of the main factors behind Bahrain women's uh, success and contributions to the development march. Uh, can you tell us more about such factor as well as other factors that led to this progress, of course? Uh, yes, of course, the, uh, the National uh, Action Charter uh, gave the uh, political uh, uh, rights mm -hmm. for women. Amen. Okay. And uh, Bahraini women for the many decades mm -hmm. really always uh, get through challenges yes. and uh, uh, having very advanced uh, education, you know, beginning from the 60s. And uh, but with the National uh, Action Charter really uh, give women mm -hmm. uh, a very powerful platform mm -hmm. so she can really with the political uh, rights given to her uh, she become really uh, beyond expectations yeah and then we come after the after the this uh, rights the uh, political rights mm -hmm. then we have also the uh, supreme council for women mm -hmm. which is a main factor in women advancement today mm -hmm. as um, uh, i mean there are always studies and uh, uh, plans uh, for for this advancement yes uh, now we are working uh, on the advancement of women from 2013 to 2022. Yes. And then uh, beyond that, we are going also to have the next plan yes. and so on. So it is really uh, uh, with all these uh, factors, women uh, can have uh, high positions mm -hmm. in the private sector, in the public sector, in the public sector, she is holding 53 percent okay. and uh, uh, she is uh, chairing uh, uh, boards yes. uh, she is ceos she is in a very high positions in bahrain yes mm. yes and it is amazing to see yes. that yes yes really. it is yeah um dr Tsam, uh, is there anything else that you would like to add uh, since you're here with us today before we end um, well, we are uh, celebrating uh, now the uh, uh, National Action Charter, mm -hmm. the 20th anniversary, That's and the integration so. also, integration yes. of uh, women needs in the framework of, uh, of uh, the whole plan mm -hmm. is really a great achievement. Yes. So we really are celebrating today the uh, uh, National Action Charter, the 20th anniversary, but also, yeah, and we are celebrating the, the, the results, the fruit of this, uh, of this yes. charter. Yes. We are celebrating uh, the, uh, the democratic achievement. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating the human rights freedoms. Yes. And we are going to celebrate the Women Day for the uh, 2021 mm -hmm. under the theme uh, National Women uh, let me remember it. Bahraini women in the national development, a march of progress in a dedicated nation. Okay. It is really a dedicated nation. Yes. We are small mm -hmm. in size, yes. but we are really big in achievement. Definitely, definitely. 
Dr. Bassam Delal, thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you, Sarah. Thank you. Now, uh, we have reached to the end of the first coverage of the special coverage as we all are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the National Action Charter. We would like to thank you for watching. Stay tuned with us today at 4 p.m. for another coverage. Goodbye.